Good morning, everyone. As we celebrate today, we celebrate St. Martin de Porres, who died in 1639, born in Lima, Peru, of a Spanish father and a black slave mother. Eventually became a Dominican lay brother and served the needs of the poor, the sick, especially uh, the slaves. He uh, was greatly devoted to the Eucharist. As we uh, remember St. Martin de Porres this day, we bring our needs, our intentions, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. To prepare ourselves to come to the altar once again worthily to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we pause to acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord have mercy, let us pray. O God, who led St. Martin de Porres by the path of humility to heavenly glory, Grant that we may so follow his radiant example in this life as to merit to be exalted with him in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For, excuse me. For I... For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are children of Israel. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. And the people there were observing him carefully. In front of him there was a man suffering from dropsy. Jesus spoke to the scholars of the law and Pharisees in reply, asking, Is it lawful to cure on the Sabbath or not? But they kept silent. So he took the man and After he had healed him, dismissed him. Then he said to them, Who among you, if your son has an ox, who among you, if your son or ox falls into a cistern, would not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? But they were unable to answer his question. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, the Synod has gone on for the last month or so in in Rome, and I know documents have been published in part, and I have not had time to read them yet, but someday I'll get to that. But a simple question maybe as we put the current chapter of uh, the Church, the current chapter of our own diocese, the current chapter of our family of parishes, and to dialogue with the gospel today, how is it that we come into dialogue with those who maybe have different views? For 2,000 years from the time of Jesus, very clear, Jesus was sent on mission by the Father. And the church is still very much on mission. Sometimes maybe we forget that. And uh, part of that mission is dialogue. And we hear again today a very familiar story that Jesus was in the home of one of the opposing factors. He was in the home of one of the Pharisees. And we hear very clearly they were observing him carefully. Of course, already looking to find fault to trip him up. But Jesus was not unwilling to enter into dialogue with those that he was opposed. He would sit with them, often at their own table, in their own home. They got home court advantage. And he was willing to talk and to listen, ask questions. Maybe that's really the model for us, too that uh, we need to be willing to enter into dialogue with those that oppose the way we think. And um, it also requires that the person at the other side of the table also is willing to dialogue. It is a two-way street, and we saw very clearly for the Pharisees it probably wasn't a two-way street. Uh, Jesus 
knew that they didn't really want to answer his questions or at least enter into a discussion. And if you take all that really to the first reading, what do we hear? Paul is speaking about his sorrow, his anguish, over the unbelief of his own people. Well, how is it that we really approach those who do not really make that faith of ours the foundation of their life? Maybe they say that they are Catholic, but they really don't follow, or perhaps they don't really believe at all. Is it that we're filled with anguish and sorrow for them, or are we filled with anger and hostility towards them? We need to really question how it is we respond, how we react to those who maybe do have that differing opinion, particularly if that opinion is not rooted in faith. Paul was filled, we hear, with sorrow and anguish, not with anger and hostility. So we reflect on our own response and our own openness to really be more like Christ, to enter into dialogue with those who perhaps do not wish to embrace the faith. We think about that as we turn, we offer our needs, our intentions to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you this new day once again asking not to be filled with anger and hostility, but maybe at times some anguish and disappointment as we enter into dialogue with those who choose not to truly believe in you. Please hear our needs and petitions and help us remain faithful. For the church throughout the world, for all of the baptized that we realize under the guidance of our Holy Father and bishops that collectively we are on mission as Christ, his body in the world today. We pray to you, Lord, for those who choose not to believe or for those who have fallen away from faith as the very firm foundation of their life, that our lived example and our willingness to dialogue, to pray for them and to love them, will encourage them to enter into that dialogue of faith once again. We pray to you, Lord. And for all those in the RCIA process, some 20 right now in our process here at St. Greg's, that those approaching faith, maybe for the first time or the rediscovery of that gift, may grow in these months as they look forward to celebrating the sacraments of initiation at the Easter Vigil, we pray to you, Lord. For peace in the Middle East, in Palestine, in Israel, for peace in the Ukraine, in Africa, and many troubled areas of the world. For an end of senseless wars and acts of aggression, not only globally, but on our own city streets and within circles of families and friends, for true peace to abound. We pray to you, Lord. For Andy Erdman and Lorenzo Cabral of our parish and priestly formation, for Rick Weil and diaconate formation, and for all those who may be in discernment of God's call to priesthood, diaconate, religious life, consecrated life, we pray to you, Lord. For those in need of healing, and we especially remember Diane, critically ill at this time, and All of those in need of healing, those awaiting test results, those recovering from surgery, those who may be near life's end, for the gift of hope and the power of healing, we pray to you, Lord. And for the um, Elizabeth McLeod, for whom the Mass is offered today, and for all of the souls of the faithful departed, that they may truly share in God's gift of eternal life and peace, we pray to you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we offer you these needs spoken and treasured in our hearts. Humbly we pray to you. Please hear us and help us through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Most merciful God, who were pleased to create and bless Martin de Porres, the new man in your image, the old having passed away, graciously grant, we pray, that renewed like him, we may offer you the acceptable sacrifice of conciliation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer a sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, the great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And mercy in us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. <clears throat> Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By the power of this sacrament, Lord, we pray, lead us always in your love through the example of Bless Martin de Porres to bring fulfillment the good work you've begun in us until the day of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. go in peace. Amen. We offer the prayer for renewal. In every age, O oh God, you've called us to be your people, to be your church. In this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Continually bless our journey as we proclaim your good news. Celebrate your saving presence among us. Serve others with charity and justice and steward the world you've entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our mayor's journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a good day, everyone.